So we all know that nothing ever stays the same. Like things change all the time. And a lot of the change we experience in life is good and it's totally expected. Like how we expect winter to change to spring, all right? Totally expected, that's a great thing. Summer changes to fall. We expect our appearance to change as we grow and we get older. Literally no one I know is surprised that they look different now compared to how they look back in elementary school. And no one expects to look at 80 like they do right now, unless major plastic surgery and more power to you. But there are other types of change we experience that are unexpected. Change that can feel like it comes out of nowhere. And for many people, the unexpected changes in life are a lot more difficult to deal with. And maybe you've had a friendship that changed. You had a friendship that was close and then someone you counted on and someone you trusted, but now that friendship is no longer what it was. Something happened, something changed, and now you don't know if that friendship will ever be the same. Maybe it was a, a group of friends that changed. You had a crew that you felt like you were a part of and you felt like you fit in. Uh, you, you felt like you were in, but then something changed and now you feel like you're out. You're out of a group you thought you were in with. And now you're dealing with the new normal of trying to make new friends and trying to figure out how to deal with the hurt and confusion of losing old friends. Or maybe you've had a location that changed. You move houses, maybe you move towns, or maybe you move states, and you're figuring out that landing somewhere new can be so like disorienting. Like it can be confusing as you try to figure out a new place. It could be any number of things that disrupt our lives. Cut from a team, you don't pass the class, you bump into a health problem, you lose your summer job, and the income you thought you were gonna have is now gone. The point is there are so many possibilities of change that life can throw at us and that life does throw at us. And see, look, change is nothing new. People have always dealt with it. Like a famous philosopher said, changes, they might drive you half insane, okay? We all know the feeling. It doesn't matter how old you are, how much money you have, where you live, if you're famous or not, change affects all of us. And because of that, we need some sense of stability, something that stays the same no matter what some place or some person or some group that we know will be there for us when nothing else feels secure. And for many of us, we have always considered family to be that thing for us. For others, family has never been that safe or secure place. But for all of us, there's this idea, either from our own experience or from a belief that we have, that family should be a constant. Even if it's not, we expect it to be or we hope that it would be. So when change happens in a family, it can be that much more difficult to deal with. And maybe you have experienced this in your own family. Maybe your parents divorced. You thought your parents would be together forever and there didn't seem to be anything wrong, but then all of a sudden split up. Or maybe you had a parent pass away and whether it was expected because of an illness or totally unexpected, there is no preparing for that kind of loss and that kind of change. Or maybe it wasn't as big of a change as those, but something smaller. Like one of your parents got a new job and they had to move away for a while or they traveled a lot. Now the routine of seeing your mom or your dad consistently has completely changed. Or maybe there's a new addition to your family. You got a new brother or baby sister and the way you are now treated in the family is different. You're still love, but you no longer get the attention you're used to getting. Maybe a sibling went away to college and you're happy for them. And honestly, there's more peace in your house without them around. But the truth is it changed the way your family used to work. And you missed the normalcy of the fighting over the bathroom and sharing clothes and arguing over who took out the trash last. And honestly, you just miss your sibling that went away to college. No matter what our experience is with change, something about it happening in our families makes it more difficult to deal with. So the question is, if avoiding change isn't possible, how do we get better at handling it? Is there a way to navigate change in our family so that it doesn't cause us to become bitter or cynical? How can we be best prepared for the inevitable changes that are coming when there's change in our family? Now, when you look at the Bible, you might be surprised to see that a lot of the writers were very helpful uh, when it comes to talking about the inevitability of change in life. In fact, the writer of the Old Testament book, Ecclesiastes, who many people believe was King Solomon, he had a lot of things to say. Solomon was an ancient king of Israel. He was said was, you know, to be blessed by God with incredible wisdom, so much that he was known as the wisest man who ever lived. Now, I know what you're thinking. What does an ancient king from a place I've never been to, who is dead, have to say to me about change in my family? I'm glad you asked, because in this passage, Solomon's wisdom speaks to us 
right now. He is writing about the things he has seen happen to him and happen to people around him. He writes about life and death, the passage of time, suffering, wisdom, knowledge, and change. And this is what he says. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Woo, that is a mouthful, my friends. This passage reads kind of like poetry. And what Solomon is saying in this poetic way is, okay, everybody, you get ready because change is coming. Change is happening. There is a time for you to experience everything and everything you experience will eventually pass. Nothing stays constant and nothing stays the same. Solomon is saying to all of us that this is the world we live in and we need to get used to it. And in some ways that seems kind of depressing. See, I don't know about you, but I would love to hear that there is something I can do to make the change less painful. Or better yet, if there was something I could do to keep change from happening at all. But that's not what he's saying. He's saying the exact opposite. Everything will change at some point or another. No place, feeling, or moment is going to last. But as discouraging as that may sound, the truth is good. Knowing things will change, both in the world around us and with our family, it allows us to change the way we see it and treat it. Since fighting change and resisting it is pointless, we can change the way we approach it. It allows us to open our hands to know that whatever we are experiencing, both good and bad, it will change. It's a reminder that we are not in control of what happens and we can stop wasting energy pretending that things will always stay the same. Best of all, God is fully aware and knows everything that will change in our lives. He knows it. He knows nothing is constant for us. He knows both good and bad will come into our lives and neither will last forever. But in this life of constant change, God also makes a promise to us. And the promise isn't that he's going to smooth all the difficulty in life, but it's something better than that. In the book of Isaiah, God, through the prophet Isaiah, has a message for his people. And not everyone agrees on when Isaiah was written, but most people do agree that this book was written around a time of trouble for Israel. They were either in captivity to Babylon or coming out of exile in Babylon. In other words, their world was falling apart. They had been forced to leave their homeland, live in a land with people who spoke a different language, worshiped different gods, and were hostile to their way of life. Everything that had felt safe and secure and stable all of a sudden wasn't. In other words, they're going through some incredible change. And God, speaking to his people, says this, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Now imagine the comfort that must have brought to the people who heard it. When everything around them was changing, God wasn't. The same is true for us. In every single season of change, in every single moment of change, He will be with us. He is walking through the difficulty with us. We are never alone and God is never caught off guard by the changes. If God has promised to be with us, then that must be exactly what we need. It can be enough. So how do we prepare ourselves for the unavoidable change? Well, I think it starts by remembering these two things. Number one, that change will happen. And number two, God will be with us. As bad as it might feel sometimes, as difficult as change may seem, we don't have to be afraid of it. In fact, God can use it to grow us in ways we may have never expected. So remember this, when your family changes, your mindset matters. When your family changes, your mindset matters. When change comes along, try and think long-term. Try to remember, God is going to do something with the change. However bad it feels right now, it doesn't stay that way forever. When we have a long-term view, we know that there's something after this. We may not see it yet, but that's okay. God isn't done. The uncertainty isn't the last word. And if you can begin to see change this way, you can see it as something that takes you somewhere. Something that takes you somewhere 
good because change can be one of the things that causes us to grow and mature and become more of who God has designed us to be. Now, you may not see the purpose or the good and your current change at the current moment, but in the meantime, you can do something with it. You can use your season of change to go and help someone else. Instead of turning inward when something difficult is happening, get outside of yourself, go help someone else. Serving, caring about other people is one of the best ways to take control of what you can no longer control. And just know this, listen, if you're having an especially hard time dealing with a certain change in your life or in your family right now, it's completely understandable and you should feel no shame in talking to somebody about it and asking somebody for help. A trusted adult, someone that you know cares about you, let them know what's going on in your heart, in your life. Because listen, without question, change is difficult. A new season, a new house, a new stepmom or stepdad, an unexpected loss, whatever it is, it isn't easy. Especially with family, the place that feels like it should be safe and secure and constant in our lives. But my hope for you is that you learn to see it like Solomon did. Something that is going to happen and doesn't have to be bad. And more than that, that you would remember what Isaiah said about it, that no matter what, God is with us through this and in this. This week, I would love for you to be thinking about the ways you can see change differently. Spend time with some other people. Encourage each other about the different changes you're facing. Remind each other, hey, you're not in this alone and I am not in this alone. I'm here for you, but more than that, God is with you through your change.